Hi there, this is Lynn Allen. Thank you for joining me for another Tips and Tricks Tuesday. I want to start off with a nice shout out to Larry and to Bob Dewey and Ramadan who sent me the nicest emails this week. Thank you so much. Um, you'll also notice that today I'm wearing my glasses in an effort to look more intelligent. It's working. Probably not. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to try though. So last week we talked about parametrics. I did a little intro to parametrics and we took a look at geometric constraints and um, I'm going to continue down that vein, but today I'm going to share you this awesome trick that has to do with, uh, basically with auto constraint, which I stumbled on by accident, but now I think it's just a great, great tip. You're going to love it. All right. So let me show you what I'm talking about. If you have ever worked with somebody else's drawings, because I know it would never be your drawing, somebody else's drawings, where you like zoom in on lines and found out that they don't quite meet. This is what I'm talking about. Let me show you. I'm going to go to my in canvas viewport controls. And I'm gonna, I already have a view saved, so you didn't have to watch me zoom and zoom and zoom like that. You zoom in and you find lots of that. Like they totally didn't get the whole oh snap thing. Okay, let me zoom back out. I know you've run into it. Or maybe the drawing looks like they had too much caffeine in the morning and you have situations where like this vertical line is off by just one degree. It's supposed to be 90 degrees. And over here, these two lines are supposed to be perpendicular, but this one is off by just one degree as well. So you have to fix it and you're the one in charge of cleaning it up. And who wants to do that? I don't want to do that. <laughs> so I discovered this really cool trick completely by accident when I was started to use the parametrics. I started working with geometric constraints. So the trick is with auto constraint, which I did show you last week, but you have to make sure it's set up properly first. All right. So I'm going to drop this arrow down where it says geometric and that takes me into the constraint settings dialog. And you have to go over to the auto constraint tab. All right. So, you know, it kind of depends what you're after. If you wanted to fix lines that the gaps, you're going to need to make sure that coincidence is selected. If you want to f make sure that all the lines that are supposed to be zero degrees, you know, or 90 degrees, etc., if you want to make sure anything that's horizontal or vertical is, is anything that's close is horizontal or vertical, you need to make sure those are on too. Here's horizontal, here's vertical. If you want it to fix perpendicular, for example, you could even have it fix things like concentric, concentric, where you had circles within another circle that was just off by a little bit. You can even have it fix things like that. You really need to experiment to see all the possibilities. But we're going to deal with fixing a perpendicular, those two perpendicular lines. We're going to make them perpendicular. We're going to fix all the gaps in the join. And we had that vertical line kind of that we want to truly be vertical. Okay, that's what we're going to focus on today. So the other trick and key piece of information is the tolerance values. Okay, so you'll see that I have the angle for the tolerance value set at one. So any line or polyline that's off by just like one degree, it will fix it. It'll assume it's supposed to be horizontal or vertical if it's just off by one degree. Um, same with the perpendicular if it's just off by one degree. So you can make that value larger, completely up to you. It will fix more things in your drawing, but it might start fixing things that you didn't want it to. It's up to you. And then here, the distance has to do with the gap size, right? How big of a gap you're going to allow before AutoCAD won't fix it. So the way I have it set up, if the distance between, in this case, the two lines is less than 0.05 or 0 0.05 or less, it'll fix it. All right. So you can make that value a larger number two, completely up to you. So you set up the parameters and then you hit an OK. And then, oh my goodness, it's so easy. You go to auto constrain and you select the objects that you wanted to fix. I wanted to fix everything. So I could window them or I could say all, or you can do control A, you know, whatever makes you happy. And I'm selecting everything in the drawing, crossing my fingers. <laughs> so if you take a look at what happened, you'll see that, look at over here, these guys are perpendicular to each other, all straightened out. You'll see that this is a vertical angle. It didn't put the vertical constraint on it. Instead, it decided that it was parallel to that line over there. But you know what? I don't really care. It fixed it. That's all that matters. It fixed it. Since that's 90 degrees, that's fine with me. Now let's take a look at the gap. Let's look at the gap. Let's see. Totally fixed it. Made it coincident. That's that little blue dot there. It means it's, look, it even shows you coincidence. Awesome. Fabulous. All right, I'm going to zoom back out. Okay, so some of you are like, okay, that's great, but I don't want all those little marks on there. Those marks are called constraint bars, not a problem. You hide them. 
Nobody needs to know. Who needs to know? So you're just brilliant. You fixed your drawing like that. You're the brilliant one. You should get a raise. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. You should try auto constraint. It's awesome. I just stumbled on it by accident. Now you know all about it. We have a secret. I'm going to see you back here in two more weeks. Thank you for your time.